So on the 28th of December, just a few days ago, a company called Informatica Zero just released a confirmed specs leak regarding Intel's latest mainstream CPUs with 10th generation of core processor, code name Comet S. And there's been so much talk about it uh, lately then uh, that I thought we should take a closer look to it and see what all the fuss is about. And you know, I've always been an Intel boy. Ever since the release of their AT286, a processor which in most of your cases uh, you don't know because you were not born yet when it was released. And um, I'll say this, this is, if, if the specs are real, and apparently they are, this is the worst Intel processor release ever. Ever. So starting with the microarchitecture, we are dealing with yet another iteration of the Skylake microarchitecture, 14 nanomillimeter lithography. When I say yet, it's because this is getting ridiculous. This is the sixth iteration of it. We've been stuck since 2015 on it. I mean, where is Intel's engineering team? They haven't been doing much in the past five years, surviving on the very same macro architecture. Uh, have they been kidnapped? Should I be paying a ransom? Because I already know what's going to happen. Four months away from the official launch of this 10th generation of core processor, I already know that it's going to be the very same incremental and symbolic performance gain between the 9th and the 10th gen, the very same one we've seen between the 6th and the 7th, 7th and 8th, 8th and 9th. An optimization like this, they got an optimization, the sixth optimization of the same microarchitecture. That's a real disappointment because the whole industry was expecting Intel uh, to scale down their lithography, the manufacturing process from 14 nanomillimeter to 10 nanometer. And there is really not much excuses going for Intel, especially knowing that their main competitor, AMD, has been manufacturing processors and GPU at seven nanomillimeter manufacturing process all the way back since July uh, last year. So it, it's, it's really a confirmation of the decline, I feel, of Intel, the, sur the surrendering of Intel to AMD uh, on the engineering side. Uh, looking at uh, the 10th generation specs, uh, we're dealing with exactly identical processors and on the ninth generation. The only difference will be the number of threads. Uh, for example, on the i3, we're going from four cores, four threads, to four cores, eight threads. For the i5, we're going from six cores, six threads, to six cores, 12 threads. And as the i7 goes, we're going from eight cores, eight threads, to eight core 16 threads. Now, there is one change, and it's obviously regarding the flagship Processor. So we have the i9-10900K, which for the first time on the mainstream Intel platform will be boosting 10 physical cores for 20 threads. And that's a good thing, all right? I'm very happy about this. Well, happy is a big word, but it's, it's we've been uh, <laughs> dealing with 10, 12, 16, 24, 32 cores processors with AMD for the past year or so. I mean, AMD has a 3900X, which has 12 cores, 24 threads, and we have a 3950X, which has 16 cores, 32 threads. And, and, and we have Intel coming in with 10 cores, 20 threads, and that's not even available now. It will be available maybe in April 2020. Clockwise, here Intel has been tricky. Um, my theory here is that they've taken uh, their ninth generation processor and overclocked them, factory overclocked them, uh, to seem like they're faster. But it's only seem to be faster. Because if you look at the base clock, indeed on the ninth generation, if you look at the base clock of the i5-9600K, it's about 3.7 gigahertz. Its 10th generation counterpart is 
400 megahertz faster. But if you look at the boost clock, the natural limit of both processors, they're very similar. Actually, the ninth generation is a little bit faster, 4.6 gigahertz versus 4.5. And I mean, you still have more threads on the 10th generation, but if you look at the clock itself, they're identical. I mean, sure, the floor has been raised, uh, quite a bit on the 10th generation, but it doesn't take away the fact that if somebody's gonna uh, overclock a 9th generation uh, and, and overclock a 10th, they're not gonna go any higher. They're gonna run at the same frequency, more or less. But it's still a good thing, though, if you're buying a non-overclockable processor, then, yeah, you, you have some um, real benefits on the 10th gen. But again, this is disappointing to me because not only do I find this uh, clock strategy a bit dishonest or a lot, um, it doesn't bring us anything more from the 9th generation. The performance gain are not sufficient to motivate uh, a new purchase or an upgrade if you just are going from 9th to 10th. If you are on the 8th or the 7th, yeah, sure, glory to you. But if you're on the ninth, it, it's you're not gonna experience a faster processor, other than having more threads. That is the truth of it. PCIe wise, it's it's mind-boggling. We're still dealing with a PCIe third generation. AMD has been uh, uh, doing an amazing job at introducing PCIe 4.0 uh, all the way back since summer 2019. And as in spring 2020, Intel is going for PCIe 3.0. When I talk about complete surrendering, when I, I, I talk about being absolutely lazy, that's what I mean. It's almost making a joke of all the, the technological gain we uh, had accumulated in the past year. Well, I think that you got the message that I'm not a fan. Of, of those specs of the 10th generation core processor. But what really makes it worse, what really makes it for me a disastrous release is the fact that Intel has decided to impose a new CPU socket, an LGA-1200 replacing the LGA-1155, meaning that you will have to upgrade motherboards in order to use this third of a processor and it's so cynical coming from intel because obviously this micro architecture works absolutely fine on an 1155 cpu socket i have no idea well i have somewhat of an idea but it was not necessary to upgrade cpu socket it would have been fine and we could have been uh, at least been spared the extra expense and have a backward and, and, and forward compatibility with Z370, Z390 and uh, incoming Z490 chipset, which I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, and, and it's not going to be very long because because we're talking about the very same microarchitecture and the very same processor and the very same everything, the Z490 chipset is obviously an identical or is a Z390 chipset uh, save, I mean, the only difference is the fact that uh, Intel is uh, catching up on AMD on the Wi Fi model. We're going from the 802.11ac to AX or Wi Fi 6, giving us a 2.5 gigabit per second instead of the 1.73 gigabit per second that we've been accustomed to until now. So, the 10th generation of Intel Core processors is the most underwhelming. Intel release, I have been given uh, the pleasure to witness. And I am a tech reviewer. I love tech. I, I'm in love with tech and I'm asking nothing more to fall in love with every new thing that's coming out. But having one good new processor, like, like the, the, the 10900K, which, which is good. There's two more new cores and all that stuff. Having more threads is not enough to motivate the release of an entire new generation. When you say new generation of processor, especially when you're talking about a company as well established with a rich history, such as Intel, you're expecting innovation. You're expecting excitement. You're expecting new features, something who's, who's going 
to to want, make you want to spend money and upgrade and, and have a better gaming experience or better a better uh, a production experience, whatever you, whatever your needs are. It's not here for the tenth generation, and it's adding injury to insult when you see that Intel is so shamelessly repackaging, and I use that word a few times in that video, repackaging for the sixth time such an old, aged, and obsolete architecture as the Skylake, which lived in its grandeur four or five years ago and should not be the subject of any video in 2020. All right.